Hey, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. We've got some folks making their way in. Welcome to After Hours Conversations to help directors thrive in the COVID-19 era. We're going to get started here in just about 60 seconds, but before we do so, just wanted to uh, provide some updates to everyone on some things that are going on. So when we started this project uh, about, gosh, it's been five after hours that we've hosted now. I have to admit, I didn't think we would still have a need to continue doing this. I thought all of this was going to pass. Boy, was I wrong. I think we probably all have more questions now than we had six weeks ago when all of this started. So last week I asked the question, what are we going to do with after hours? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a couple of week hiatus because I think there's getting ready to be a lot of guidelines. We hear about NAM and NAFME and NAPR and school uh, fine arts coordinators and all of these people getting ready to release guidelines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let all of these things become public and then we're gonna all get back together again and we're gonna start talking about an action plan that you can put together that relates to your music program that you can then take to your superintendent, your school board, your principal, whoever it might be that has questions and you can say, hey, I don't have questions, I have solutions. And these are all of the resources that I used to land on these solutions. So we're looking forward to having those conversations. So again, in a couple of weeks, when all of these guidelines are released, we're gonna collect them together, we're gonna to get together, and we're gonna start talking about how we can put together an action plan so that we can be teaching music this fall in whatever capacity that might look like. So that's the plan for After Hours. More to follow, we're gonna take a few week break, but we are not done yet that is for sure so a couple of other housekeeping things uh, if you have a question please be sure to put it in the questions field not the chat field the questions field is what i'm going to be monitoring today so i can pass those along to our wonderful panelists that we've got here with us the other thing is if you are using the zoom id to access today's webinar that means i do not have your email address and if you want the PD letter or any other resources that are referenced, please be sure to email me, nick at amromusic.com to ensure that I get you that information. That's only if you use the Zoom ID to access today's conversation. So that's enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our panelists. Panelists, welcome. If you don't mind, give us a little introduction. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you teach? And then in keeping with the tradition, one thing that has just uplifted you or brought a smile to your face since all of this has started. Richie, you're in the top left of my corner, so we'll start with you. What's up, Mr. Richie? Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Richie Williams, and I'm the director of bands at Paragould High School in Paragould, Arkansas. Uh, this is my 12th year at Paragould. Um, grew up here, graduated, so uh, it's a little homecoming for me. Uh, I'm also on the state executive board as the region five chairman for the Arkansas School Band Orchestra Association. I'm also a board member for Dixie Band Camp. I have a 13 year old daughter and a wonderful eight year old son who is a spinning image of me. He's hell on wheels and I'm the best dad in the world according to them. So there you go. There and you a go. positive uplifting thing. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't cook and I eat out all the time. And so I finally said, you know what, I'm gonna buy a grill. So I bought a grill, started eating healthy. I've lost 13 pounds and been running during the COVID-19, so it's been great. Good for you, Richie, that's fabulous, man. Ali, you're next on my screen, man, what's going on? Hello, everybody, I'm Ali Liddell. Um, Dr. Ali Liddell, fresh, freshly Dr. Ali Liddell now. Um, right. I am the director of bands at Central High School in Memphis. <laughs> I've been uh, been at Central about eight years. I serve as the uh, president of the West Tennessee School Band and Orchestra Association, um, and I'm on the TMEA board, um, working as an edu during in the jazz section, which I, I'll be taking over for Rich Rapati, my good friend, uh, here pretty soon. I guess when we get back <laughs> rolling, uh, the positive uplifting thing. Well. Uh, I got to, the positive things is I get, we've got to see all of my kiddos one more time, uh, turning in instruments and uniforms. And then I saw my jazz band kids cause I got to distribute their t-shirts for the Sense of the Ellington thing uh, yesterday. And it was really good to see them. Um, so that's my positive thing for today, I guess. <laughs> love it, love it. Miss Kim, good to see you, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Hey, everybody. I'm Kim Pickering. I'm the director of bands at Lewisburg High School in Olive Branch. I've been there for 12 years. 
Um, I get to teach the middle school and high school kiddos. So that's really nice to be able to teach with a wonderful staff. Um, I think my positive thing would be just watching so many organizations come together, not just to quote unquote, make music education work, but to make it fun. I've attended so many webinars and so many um, just really great things that people are coming together to make music education thrive during this time. And I think it's so important. So that's my positive thing. Great. Love it. Thanks, Kim. And David, how are things in Middle Tennessee? Hey, everybody. My name is David Adelet. I'm the director of fine arts for Williamson County Schools. I actually started teaching in West Tennessee. My first four years were in Lexington back in the early 90s. And uh, I still miss the real West Tennessee barbecue because you can't get it good over here in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at Franklin High School for the last 12 years. And then before that at Ravenwood and Overton as well. So um, then I switched over to the dark side on the administration side. Um, for me, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it weren't for COVID-19, frankly. Uh, th there's so many people that have been more connected through the ability for us to have these conference conversations on Zoom. I know in my district, just having high school band directors talking with elementary music teachers and the cross-curricular planning that's gone into what we do in Williamson County has been great. We've even started we're doing two book studies right now with our arts teachers in Williamson County with folks from all different backgrounds. And so, again, if it weren't for the coronavirus, those things wouldn't have happened. So it's funny that we're all isolated in one way, but we're also more connected than others. So that's my positive. Yeah, that's a great silver lining, David. We kind of got knocked off of our kilter here, and, but we're finding ways to readapt. So I love that. Thank you. So I don't think we can have this conversation without talking about assumptions, because the reality is, I'm asking you guys questions about what you think is going to happen in four and six and eight and 12 weeks. And I think about how much has happened in the last 12 weeks and then saying, hey, what do you guys think are going to happen in the next 12 weeks? And it kind of makes your head spin a little bit. But I think we need to talk a little bit about what assumptions are you using right now to base your decisions? Because I think it gives people some clarity as to why you're making the decisions that you're making. So, Ali, why don't we kick off from you, man? What assumptions are you making right now, and, and how do you see the next uh, weeks and months ahead going? I am planning as if we are full speed ahead, just like we're going to have band camp at our usual time. That's what I'm planning. I'm assuming that it's not everything and uh, will be ready for us to have band camp. However, I'm also um, it's like I'm, I have a plan B in mind for what is what if if it doesn't happen on time, um, and it may it may be that we have band camp at a delayed time, but we still have that that build up until the start of school. Like school may be delayed, so I'm kind of planning either or. But I'm going forward with you know communication with incoming freshmen, communicating band camp dates, charting you know writing music, charting drill all those things as if, as if it's going to be business as usual. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Richie, how about, how about for you guys? What, what are the assumptions you're operating under right now? Well, we, you know, we're just extremely positive uh, over here in Arkansas, you know, being one of only the, you know, four states that didn't get shut down and put on, uh, you know, stay at home orders. So, we, you know, it, it's, it's been really good. Uh, we, like, I, like, you know, we spoke before, you know, we're full bore ahead. We're assuming that we're going to uh, be together in some capacity, hopefully by July. We're going to know that decision by May 20th, which is next week. So we're just, you know, fingers crossed that everything is going to somewhat be normal. I don't think we're going to return to this complete normalcy that we're all used to, but I'm hopeful that, uh, that we're, we, we at least can get back together. Okay, perfect. Uh, David, how about for you guys? Because you're in a little different position. You're not on a podium, but you're at an administrator's chair. Uh, now, what's your take? Well, I think for us, it's Thinking about the summertime, we're planning for small group sectional rehearsals. Uh, we're looking to get kids back on campus maybe in June and with a lot of uh, pretty, pretty thought out guidelines about how we're going to do that and how we're going to promote the safety of our kids and families and at the same time still have bands as much as we can. Um, who knows if we're going to have band camp, but we may have a whole bunch of flute sectionals and we may have a bunch of things that in the aggregate add up to what band camp might have been. Uh, you know, I don't know if we can learn dots and flute sectionals or not, but you know, we're the thing about us as band directors, and we all know this, is we just figure it out, you know, and we have our eye on the North Star, 
and we'll take whatever recommendations are there and then we'll figure it out and make it happen. Um, I do think, and Ollie talked about this as we were chatting beforehand, I think a focus on fundamentals is gonna be really important. It's an opportunity for us to go back to what's really important and making that assumption that we need to focus more on fundamentals through all this. And I think that's uh, you know, sort of our opportunity that we have in this, in this crisis that we wouldn't have had otherwise, maybe. Yeah. Uh, David, let me pull that apart a little bit more. Define fundamentals. Are you talking about teaching fundamentals, music fundamentals, or why we do what we do? Uh, well, those are all good. All of those. <laughs> I would say, you know, I'm, you know, just teaching it for me, the, the longer I taught, the more fundamentals I did, both on the you know, marching band side, on the visual side, and on the music side, too. And um, Ollie, I'm not stealing your thunder here, but I was so happy to hear you say this when we were getting started, that you do the same warm up inside that you do outside and that your, play, your approach to playing doesn't change no matter where you are. I think that's the way to go. You know, um, a lot of my friends, I've got some folks that get a little snooty about marching band and um, I've even had people say, well, now I have to teach the kids how to play with an inside tone. I don't even know what that means because when we were in horn circle at Franklin working on whatever, we were working on concert band stuff there too, because the quality sound on a trumpet doesn't matter where you're sitting or where you're standing. So I think really just leaning into that, you know, I mean, think about the pedagogy you can get across if you have your kids in sectionals for an extended time during the summer, more so than you would have had otherwise. So I think it's an opportunity to really dig into that and make the most of you know, all those alternate fingerings and, you know, and the things that maybe sometimes get glossed over when you're running a full band rehearsal. Yeah. So that's what I would say. That's great, David. Thank you so much. And then Kim, how about for you? Kind of where are you right now in all of this? Um, I think just, I mean, echoing what so many of them already said, uh, we're making a plan for a competitive something and we're making a plan for a less than competitive show. Um, just <coughs> I, my staff just this morning, we, we have to have a plan in place with all the stuff that goes with it before things happen. Um, just because our kids and our parents and our administration is looking to us to, to do that. And I, I don't, I know our students would just be lost if we said, well, give us another three weeks to figure it out. Um, I think that our number one priority is to know and let our kids know that we're going to meet them wherever they are. Um, I think as we go back into this next little set, we just need to remember that you know, our kids are probably not going to be exactly where they would have been had we been in front of them on the podium every day. Um, so as we make our plans musically and all those things, um, just working through that stuff, um, having a plan in place, and like David said, just hitting those fundamentals like crazy um, as we get back, whenever that may be. Our Mississippi Ex High School Activities Association right now is saying that we can have things as of June 1st, but they are going to reconvene on May the 21st uh, to make some more decisions on that. Um, so we're just, we're just kind of holding out for that. Um, I have not personally, we have not done auditions yet. Uh, I want, if I can at all possible, see them in person. I want to do that in the month of June and get those auditions out of the way and send numbers. Um, but if not, then we'll obviously do our uh, online stuff. Perfect. Well, Ken, I'm going to come right back to you because my next question is, is okay, so what, what changes are you kind of anticipating and planning for and thinking through now? If you could just kind of take us through some of those and you referenced a couple of them in, in your, so first off, you're kind of running two parallel shows, one in a competitive, one in a non-competitive setting. Can you kind of talk us through that process and some of the things that might differentiate the two for directors that might be having that same thought process? Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think we have to understand just time wise. I mean, um, we, we were speaking before just so many schools are making, you know, we could have our kids on Monday and we could have them on Monday and Wednesday. We just never know what that's going to be. So I think whatever shows we choose have to be something that we can make the most of in the time that we have. I don't I don't I'm not jumping up out of the hoops and reaching for the stars on the absolute most challenging thing that we've ever done. I don't think that this is the time or place for that right now. I think finding something um, in both of the shows that we're working on that they can be successful at, that will still challenge them, uh, and that's going to provide them an opportunity to enjoy that. Because let's be honest, that's why they're there is because they enjoy those things. Um, so again, just working through that stuff. And, you know, the changes that we all really have to think about as well as the sterilization and the cleaning and the, you know, 
everybody's band halls. I know during band camp is probably the grossest place in, in America by the time you bring all the grass and the dirty kids and all those things in there. Um, I just think that we have to think through even down to those really small details um, in order to jump through these next several weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Great points. So uh, Ali, how about for you guys, you know, what, what things are you doing proactively now to address what might be in the future? Okay, um, right now, uh, me and a few other directors from our district, um, in coordination with our music supervisor, Drew Davison, we are uh, we're actually have a meeting set up for Thursday. We're going to develop a set of, uh, you know, basically teaching guides and um, lessons that are at the online platform. Now, this is, this is not so much marching band specific, but just in general. Um, and our rationale is basically we want to get ahead of uh, anything. If we do go, if we don't go back to school uh, on time or in a reasonable time, and they go to virtual learning, we want to be ahead of where we don't. We don't want to have to have someone dictate, "Hey, what you're going to do." We want to. We want to have what we're doing already done, so that and it, and it, and, it, and it's also according with our YouTube Bible. So. That administrators won't, you know, basically shove some stuff down our throats. We want to, we want to have something that's uh, beneficial for students, um, that aligns with our state curriculum, but um, and is, uh, you know, it's not just busy work. Something that's actually going to benefit them musically. Um, uh, uh, what, the, what we're really looking at so far is following sort of a uh, private lesson model. And uh, kind of like what we would do in your um, um, studio in college. So there'll be, you know, what's kind of some of the things that I've been doing right now individually with students. There'll be different exercises. They'll be able to play. We'll come back, let me listen to them. Then they'll submit, uh, submit recordings of them working on them. And it's really fundamental work. I'm not, you know, if we don't go back to school, obviously there is no marching band if we're, we're out of school. Um, there's no football, there probably will be no marching band, and it's okay. Uh, band is, is more than a marching band. Um, so we're going to still go on. Uh, but to do that, like what um, David was talking about, I mentioned earlier, uh, we must, you know, focus in on the fundamentals. Lip slurs, long tones, um, um, just making sure, you know, that he was talking about alternate figurings, um, scales, sight reading, different things that just I tackle the fundamental individual player. And, and uh, I've, I've, I've not had much success performing as a group via a Zoom call. I've tried it. And I've not had much success because of time. <laughs> and it's, it doesn't work. But we can't. So if we're, we're not operating as far as band as a collective, then that means that we really need to be operating individually. So developing the student's musicianship on an individual basis is where it goes. So I've, you know, this is, this is kind of a trial and error thing, but I have had some success in just sending students materials. Um, and I've had them ask, I want something, can you give me a hard flute solo as a senior? Ask me for, because she's bored. She wants a something hard. <laughs> so we've submitted, to, you know, different things, uh, uh, Arben studies, uh, different things just to, to benefit them, individual musicianship. Now, playing, perform domain is not our only um, 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 uh, curricular uh, activity they need to work on. Obviously there's respond and connect and those are different things that we can do uh, virtually that I think will meet the requirements of the state of Tennessee as far as the curriculum is concerned and actually be beneficial. And I'm gonna say that actually be beneficial. And I think all of you guys know what I'm talking about when it's just not some busy, silly little assignment, do a crossword puzzle crap. We're trying to actually stimulate their mind so they can develop as total musicians. So um, that's, what, that's what we're working on with just me and a few other directors in the district. Um, the other thing that we're doing is exciting thing that uh, me and uh, Drew Davidson's idea, he just, you know, that's what you say about what are the positive things about the coronavirus, he just said, he just, he was just thinking up one day and um, he's going to see, he's, we're going to develop a curriculum on how to basically produce music um, at home using free resources and uh, 
This is with uh, the Memphis Music Initiative, a uh, guy named Toy, uh, Ty Borland. I mixed his name <coughs> highly. But Ty Borland, he's a, he's a music producer, um, in, a local music producer, Grammy-nominated music producer. And he's come up with different things that we're going to develop. We're actually going to uh, produce a video on, hey, this is how you produce a song. So you have a song I'm using electronic resources. Because there's obviously, like I talked about earlier, um, I was happy to get to get instruments, um, um, especially so students can check out instruments for the summer, um, so that they won't be sitting at home, especially the large school instruments. Because kids, most kids don't own a tuba, most right. kids don't own a tone. So these are lar these large instruments. They can they check it out. They can play. However, what about the ninth graders that don't have a school instrument? What what are, what are they going to do? Well, this is something that they can do to meet the perform aspects, even though it's it create, they create music electronically. Um, I got a lot of kids that think they're music producers. I have actually some graduates that are music producers, but this is something that they can do that are still, still, you know, to stay aligned with what they, what they, what we want them doing to develop as a total musician. Yeah. Um, yeah that, so, that's such a good point, Ollie. Yeah. Thank you. And I think you, you really hit the, hit the nail on the head there when you talked about being proactive with your curriculum even into the fall. I really love that mindset that we've got to approach. So uh, that, that's, that's a good thing. And I want to pull some – I would like to talk a little bit more about the assignments you guys are putting in there because I think there's some good stuff um, that other directors need to hear about. Richie, how about for you guys? You're taking a, a full steam ahead approach. What are some of the changes and things that you guys are implementing right now to prepare for what might be? Well, uh, I think like all of us, I mean, and we, you know, when we got out of school back in March, I thought, oh, hey, I told the kids, man, April 6th, we're back. We're back. This is going to pass. And then, <laughs> of course, and then we just shut down. It's like, uh. so we were very fortunate uh, that on Thursdays in January, we started spring training with our drum line, our front ensemble, our color guard, and our drum majors. So they had already had that training. We were supposed to have our auditions the, the week before spring break when we got out. So, you know, we, we kind of coasted there through spring break and the week after, and then I just sent out and said, hey, we're going to do this virtually. So we, you know, we had all of our, you know, drum line, front ensemble, color guard, drum major. We did them online. We did, uh, you know, Zoom meetings with them. Uh, we did interviews. Uh, I brought in some other band directors and just kind of had a panel where, you know, ask questions to the drum majors to, you know, ask some leadership type things. And then I basically uh, I got with got with wonderful staff. I've got Cody Ballard, Josh Mobley, and then Carlos Serna. And uh, you know we made some marching fundamental videos, which was like kind of weird uh, that we're you know having the kids really you know teach themselves how to march. But we just took a very basic approach and like, look, will you turn an audition video in? Can you hold an instrument up? Can you keep your feet in time? I don't care about what you look like as long as we can at least get you know you're at least showing that you want to do this. We're going to, you know, whenever we get back together, we're, you know, we're going to, we're going to, uh, you know, uh, be able to teach you, you know, what you're doing. Um, and then another thing that I did was <clears throat> I said, who wants to be a section leader? And of course, and they, they, you know, they all, you know, sent emails to me. So then I put task them to start being my eyes and ears out in the field and, and really start creating group chats. Start, and I said, you know, I want you to do something fun every week with the kids, get them involved. You know, you just, you know, talk to those eighth graders because we march ninth through 12th grade. So, so my section leader candidates, you know, they took the initiative. They started doing like a uh, uh, mellophone marathon Mondays and, and just, you know, just having where they have to, you know, submit some video of what they're, you know, what they're doing and what they're working on. So it, it's, it, that's been a really positive experience of getting, getting my section leader candidates even more involved and kind of keeping everybody, you know, plugged in and, and focused on uh, one day things are going to be normal and let's, you know, let's, let's don't let the uh, Corona apocalypse, you know, slow us down. Yeah. Well, I, I saw, man, I love that. So have you guys picked section leaders or is the plan just kind of to draw this process out as long as you well, can? <laughs> what, 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 so yesterday we, we did an eight hour a marathon of, of section leader meetings with my staff and all the kids. And we basically just sat here, you know, just kid after kid after kid. And then, you know, some, you know, why are you going to be a section leader? What all have you been doing to help your section, to help the band, da, da, da. And uh, so we're, the auditions are due, their videos are due this Friday. Uh, so we're basically when I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to announce the section leaders until after the audition is done. Cause I want them to kind of keep, you know, keep keeping the hype up and keeping the kids excited about wanting to, uh, you know, to audition and get their videos turned in. Yeah, man. That's it. I really love that idea. So, so you guys have done uh, your leadership 
um, selection process online using interviews and then you have also kind of tasked them with helping to generate content to see who's going to rise to the top and who's yeah. not so I think there's a lot of really good lessons because it sounds like you might be a little ahead of the curve for other bands that might be thinking how am I going to do selections and kind of form my leadership team and you've got some really good ideas any other lessons learned if you had to go back and do this again what would you do differently for this uh well one thing i'll just say this and you know you can take it for what it's worth if you know me you know my personality and i'm a firm believer in things that are important to you you're going to find a way things that are not important to you you're going to find an excuse and if you, you know if you're going to sit back and you know make an excuse of why you know we can't do you know xyz because of the coronavirus i mean at the end of the day it's all about the students it's all about their experiences and and you know we just saw a senior class that kind of you know lost it all there at the end and you know oh my gosh so terrible way to end the year so you know if if, if i were to look back oh, gosh i wish we you know we're doing even more with the kids i wish we you know we were you know i, I know we're doing you know, maybe more than some, but I just, I just wish, you know, we were just kind of pushing even harder because, you know, I don't want this next group of kids to kind of lose out, you know, uh, on, you know, what could be an awesome year for them, even though things may not be normal. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a great mentality to approach. And, and so um, I suspect you could have some directors reaching out to you for more information on how you did all of that. Cause it sounds like it was really, really good. Uh, David, how about for you? I mean, from the administrator position, what advice do you have for directors to help them be responsive to all the possibilities there might be? Well, I think, uh, first off, I th you know, Richie has talked about this student responsibility. I think that's going to be huge because like for us, we're, we're talking about what school might look like in Williamson County next year. And, you know, there's like three different, there's three different scenarios and then there's all the shades and nuances in between. So, you know, option A is we're in school and everything's normal. We all know that's probably not going to happen. B is, is that we have online school. And then C is, maybe it's a blend of both. So maybe we have half the kids on campus on Monday. And then at, on Tuesday, they're at home doing stuff at home. And then we have the other half of the kids on Tuesday. And so your band classes are all split in numerous ways. Uh, so for that, for that to happen, the kids are going to have to be responsible on the days where they're not under the thumb of the band director. And so that, that leadership training and that sense of responsibility that kids need, that we all want anyway, is going to be even more important now as we go through uh, ensuring their development when they aren't having face time with their teacher. And band directors can be a little bit of control freaks sometimes. I don't know if you guys know that or not. So we're going to have to find out ways to nuance those sense of motivational uh, necessities beyond just, hey, you didn't practice, go run a lap. I mean, there's just going to have to be more subtlety and uh, sophistication in how we deal with student leadership, I think. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about in Williamson County. I also think, too, just, you know, Ollie, you mentioned a minute ago about the other domains, speaking about the Tennessee standards. You're going to have to have a, a we're going to have to have a different approach to how we look at the create domain, which we usually just think, oh, that doesn't really matter. And we spend most of our time talking about perform and standards. And so maybe band class looks a little different because maybe now band class is more like, okay, I've got a, in this class, I've got a flute, a tambourine, a clarinet and a tuba. Okay. You guys go arrange this little hymn and come back and play it for me tomorrow. And so I think there's going to have to be more of that. And if you have a whole bunch of kids that can arrange music, then your band's better. And so we're finding ways to improve our programs in non-traditional ways in the, you know, in the circumstances that we're in now that we're not used to. So it's just, it's finding a way to get better and, and uh, being creative with how we approach our jobs. Yeah. Uh, David, do you have any, any, as an experienced educator, um, I mean, what are some other ways Richie has talked about kind of, challenging director or uh, student leaders, potential student leaders to help generate content. Do you have any other thoughts or suggestions for helping to develop those student leaders? Because everybody has talked about the importance of that. Um, well, I can, you know, in my, in my, I taught at four different schools. I did leadership four different ways. And uh, I liked aspects of all of it. The way we did it at Franklin was, is that we didn't have a leadership team. We let the seniors take the lead but we never said anything to a group of, to a small group of leaders that we didn't say to the whole band. And so every rehearsal was a leadership lesson for us. We wanted the, we wanted the worst freshman with the worst attitude 
to hear the same information that we were going to pass on to the seniors because they need to hear that sense of, uh, they need to have the vision for what they could be. Uh, sometimes in my experience, I think when you pick a leadership team specifically, then you're alienating a whole bunch of kids. And so we didn't want to do that. We wanted to include everybody in that band leadership so that you could even recognize if there's a freshman out there on the last, on, you know, an hour before the last rehearsal at band camp, reviewing their dots before practice, that's leadership. So I think it's probably for band directors, maybe it's identifying what leadership looks like in this new world that we're in and highlighting that and making sure that you're rewarding kids that are doing that in a way that makes them feel like they have a sense of, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. So to answer yeah. your question. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really good. So I, I do think you're right. We'll have to kind of evaluate that through the leadership lens and how do these new requirements of teaching in this post COVID world, you know, how do I reflect my leadership style and the band's leadership challenges? Ali, how about for you guys? How are you addressing leadership uh, in your program for the upcoming year? Oh, we did. We do have section leaders and we pick those and just like we normally do before the end of school, we actually were a little earlier than we would, would normally because we do, this would probably happen now. Um, they'd actually uh, find out now. The, the, we would have, we were going to do a, we'd have a leadership retreat. Um, uh, we had the, the great one uh, at South, South uh, Haven last year, but um, I forgot his name. He is phenomenal. Um, that it was sponsored by him as well. That, I think that was, that was phenomenal. But we do have a specialized in, uh, um, leadership retreat where we talk to our sex leaders about what they were, what do we expect from them. Because a lot of students, uh, when they hear sex leaders, they think it like it's an award, like they've won something. And it's not an award, it's a job. Uh, and so we do want, we do have expectations for our sex leaders um, that for, for their behavior, for their things that they should be doing with their sections. Um, so we'll have that, but it's going to have to be virtually. It's not going to be in person, but we're going to have that, which usually happens near the end of May, right before school is out anyway. So we're going to do that. And it's going to look different, you know, uh, as a sex leader, um, you know, we don't, we, we can't afford at Central, we just cannot afford the text, music text that, that uh, a lot of programs do. Um, a lot of the things, the text that we have of my former students, that are in college, music majors, and they come back and I put them to work. Um, I, one thing I sell them on is for, for one, this is experience that you, that you will get on top of your student teaching that will really benefit you. And a lot of them have, you know, that are, my former students that are now band directors, they, they, are, they really appreciate it. But on top of that, uh, we're gonna talk to them about how to run a sectional online virtually. What are kind of things that you're doing? So we depend a lot on our sectional. Uh, our sex leaders, even in uh, through the summer, uh, sex leaders just schedule, hey, we're going to meet up in the trumpet section. We're going to meet up at the trombone section or X, Y, and Z. And they do a lot of things that's independent from what we do as an overall band because it's it's very difficult. So that's really how, how we're handling the sex leaders' uh, responsibilities. And it's this much is very similar. Yeah, that, that's really good thoughts, Ali. I, I mean, from what everybody is saying, I think we can – probably predict that um, student leadership is going to be a core component to success moving forward because we should anticipate meeting in smaller groups in some capacity, whether that's on rotating A and B days or after school sectionals or whatever it might be. So it definitely sounds like the development of the leadership component is going to be really important. Uh, moving into the future. So let's talk about the various stakeholders within the marching band program. I know it takes a lot of people boosters, uh, administrators, uh, we talked about the student leaders that all have to make this program, uh, that all have to contribute to make this successful. So, uh, Richie, we'll kick off with you, man. What kind of conversations are you having right now with your stakeholders, your boosters, and your administrators uh, to kind of prepare for the unknown? Well, uh, you know, one of the things I said, uh, I had a conversation with my superintendent, I said, you know, I don't think they're going to cancel high school football in Texas. So that's kind of the mentality I've been having with, you know, we need to be thinking, how can, how can we do this? And let's not just so be so, you know, we want to be safe and we want to make sure it's, you know, nothing happens, you know, with the kids and it's all about safety. But, you know, we need to just have that mentality that, okay, 
how, how can we get there? And let's, let's, let's come up with, let's approach it with that mentality. Uh, I have wonderful boosters. I mean, my gosh, I mean, my parents are just, you know, just really sold out. If ever, if, if ever there was a school that's a band school, it's, it's certainly Paragould. Uh, we, uh, so, you know, the, 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 the community really buys into what, you know, what we're doing and, and, and what we're all about. Um, you know, we just put, we, we, we put a lot of things out on social media. We've been just trying to just keep everybody, you know, focused on, you know, when, when everything gets back to normal, when, you know, you know move, moving forward with that, with that mentality. Um, we um, want to kind of, kind of go much to my section leaders, but also with my parents. We just make sure that everybody is like, is on our social media is, you know, is on our mind. <clears throat> we, you know, we have some of the group chats, you know, we, we, we still having, you know, booster meetings and things like that. We still want to keep everybody some form of normalcy, you know, and keep everybody uh, enthused about, you know, band in general, you know, and one of the things that I'm, I'm concerned about uh, uh, with my students is, I mean, a lot of my band kids are going out and getting jobs right now, which is awesome. But, you know, keeping them thinking about, okay, you know, when, when, when school does get back, Hey, I, I want to go back to band. I want to, I want to be in band and not have that mentality of like, eh, I think I just want to stay and make some money at my job, you know, and, and not, not want to give that, give back up that time that, you know, that, that I gave up to be in the band. So that's another reason we're just keeping kids hyped up and keeping kids focused on wanting to, you know, wanting to come back to band whenever, you know, school gets back. Yeah, that's such a good point. And, and we have to mention the mentality that you, I mean, you're, you're not approaching this as can we have band? where it's a yes or no, it could or could not happen. You're approaching this with how we can, how can we have ban? We have removed no from an option and now we're focusing all of our energy on yes, how can we have ban? And I think that's such an important mental exercise for us here. Let's just not even think about no, don't spend energy on that and let's spend all of our energy on yes. So I think that's a, such a good point. Uh, David, how about for you guys? I mean, what conversations do directors need to be having with the various stakeholders to prepare for w what's to come? Well, I just want to go back. I don't want, I'm not arguing, but I would say you should have a plan A, in my opinion, but they need to be really developed in your plan B, C, D, and all the way down the line. Because if you just, if you just say, we're having marching band, and then you're not ready whenever that, you're not ready to pivot when that eventual decision happens to nod or whatever, then you got to be sure you're prepared. And I think regarding communication with stakeholders, you know, you want to present to them a sophisticated, well thought out uh, approach to what you're doing. Like I would, I would want to, I would want my band directors in Williamson County to go into a booster meeting or a booster zoom and say, here's plan A and here's plan B and C so that they know that you've thought about it and that you're prepared. So, because that speaks to your level of professionalism and how well you're going to treat your kids, because ultimately that's who's going to, you know, either thrive or not based on your decisions. And so be as prepared as you can about what you're going to do and be able to communicate that. Um, that seems pretty obvious to say that, but that's, I think that's extremely important. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. That's and good point. for principals and administrators too, you know, your principal says, well, you can't have your wind ensemble class, but you can have, you know, eight flutes and a tambourine and a vibra slap. Well, you need a plan for that because that may happen. Yeah. Might be hearing some more vibra slap uh, solos coming up. Yes. Is that what we're suggesting? Maybe a new category at solo ensemble. <laughs> Going to be hearing some of that. That's when we know we've all been creative. So, well, let me shift questions a little bit. Uh, and Ali and Kim, I want to come to you guys on this. I mean, obviously there is a funding component to what we do in the fall. And so, uh, are, are you guys making any plans? I mean, I know concession stands is a big fundraiser. A lot of bands do fundraisers in the fall. I mean, in the back of your mind, what, what role is funding play, uh, playing in all of this? And how are you kind of preparing for what might be for your program's funding needs uh, in or out? Kim, how about you? Um, I think, I mean, we're working through our budget very cautiously right now. And I think that really everybody has to do that at the moment. I know our band program missed probably $10,000 worth of fundraising since we got out on March the 6th. You know, we always do several right there at the end of the spring, you know, things that all work together. But um, I think that we have to proceed with caution. I know that um, in my plan A, B, C, and D, as David was mentioning, um, we are really not trying not to make any big financial commitments right this moment. 
um, like all of, you know, my drill people and my visual team and all those people, um, they're on board with the fact that if we don't use whatever our competitive show is this year, then we're okay with doing that next year. They've made, we've made all the concessions for that to happen. And obviously they'll get their money for that. But, um, you know, we don't know. I've been told from some places that a district budget is already set for the upcoming year. Um, we don't necessarily know that. Um, or if that money will have to be shifted to, you know, safety things or whatever that is. So um, we're proceeding with caution. We're doing as much as we possibly can. I have a fantastic booster club um, that would literally go to the end of the earth to make sure the Lewisburg band program has what it needs. Um, and they will continue to do that. But again, we're just, we're proceeding with caution and trying not to make um, the big, huge financial commitments for the fall just quite yet just so that we don't step off into something we can't get ourselves out of. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a huge question mark as it relates, not just to band program, but school funding. And um, for those that follow the news, there was a bill that hit the house of representatives floor today. That's trying to address um, anticipated shortfalls in education. So it'll be something a lot of people in the education community will be watching to see how the federal legislation addresses uh, tax shortfalls and how it impacts schools. So a lot of different moving pieces. Uh, Ali, how about for you guys? Um, what, what considerations are you giving funding at this juncture? Um, as far as my boost club is concerned, luckily uh, or unluckily, I, I do all my arranging and writing uh, my drill myself. So we don't have to pay a lot of, a lot of the things that we would pay out don't, don't happen anyway until the fall comes. So we don't have to worry about um, uh, outlay of any funds until the fall. So if things are, you know, if we don't have football, if we don't have competitive marching band, then there are a lot of things that we wouldn't pay for anyway. So I think we're in good shape because a lot of a lot of what money will we spend in band is front loaded on, um, you know, uh, on the beginning of the year. Uh, so luckily for us, we, we, I don't think we'll have that much of an issue there. Uh, because, you know, travel expenses, you know, um, uniform assessments, those kind of things. However, uh, you know, another thing, we are lucky to, to work in Shelby County Schools. Even though we don't get a budget, we do get, uh, Drew Davidson does a good job of securing funding from, uh, you know, to make sure that we have um, school instruments, um, um, lots of school instruments. So that, that, that really, and he does help with travel and other things, too. So I think that we're, we're in good shape. There are, are things that our booster club does that will be impacted. Um, they've actually talked about selling masks. That's something that a, a, a Central Warrior Band uh, mask that they're talking about selling. Um, um, our booster club is, is uh, purging, they just went out of their way. They're, you know, they're still in the 2020, um, they're still not quite moved to 21, 2021 yet. Um, they are they're, they're, they purchase yard signs for our seniors and different things for the seniors. But one of the fundraising things that they're coming up with now is selling Central Warrior masks. Um, so I think that's a that's a possibility. I think that's a, that's something that we should roll with. But other than that, nothing nothing is set in stone yet for the booster club till the fall. Okay. Yeah. So so for a lot of people, it just sounds like kind of a a. a Cautious optimism, but but very careful at this time. Uh, Richie, how about for you guys? Anything that you might um, contribute on that as it relates to funding? Um, well, obviously, I mean, we're you know, I'm I'm, I'm concerned. Whenever I uh, uh, went to uh, talk to my superintendent about the budget, and she's like, "Well, we're just kind of in a holding." I was like, "Okay." So, and the realization that uh, you know the funds probably you know are not going to be what they have been. So, you know, obviously, you know, thinking about the cuts that we need to make. Um, you know, kind of what piggybacking on, on what Kim said, you know, you know, losing out on those April and May fundraisers, you know, definitely, you know, takes a, you know, a toll, uh, you know, for our kids who are, you know, putting money into their band, their, you know, their band account for, you know, for next year. So, you know, we're, it's, it's, it's like it's everything we're talking, so we're just in a holding pattern right now, just to wait, wait and see, you know, what's going to come down from, you know, the upper government through, you know, the state and then down to, you know, the local level at the school district. So. But being very cautious in, in our spending right now, I uh, did have some money basically left over in my in this year's budget. So I went ahead and, and made deposits uh, to all of my designers, just to, you know, knowing that this is going to be a tough time for them. You know, they're not going to, 
if competitive marching band doesn't happen or if, you know, you know, the, the, they're not able to make their money, you know, writing drill and, and arranging things. So, you know, we, we only hadn't and had all of our music written. Uh, and so, you know, we just, I wanted to kind of help them out too. And I'm, but I'm, in a, I'm in a very fortunate situation where I was able to do that. That's good. Yeah. Thanks, Richie. So, so Dave, I want to pick on you for a minute because uh, you have worn so many various hats, uh, both as administrator, but you spent a pretty good amount of time as a judge as well. And so I, I want to talk a little bit about that for people who might be thinking that they want to take their, their band to a judged competition this year. Let's assume right now that we have some sort of abbreviated practice schedule, either because we have to delay later in the year or we have to do it in small sectionals, whatever it might be. Where do people need to spend their money, or excuse me, their time to get the most bang for their buck as it relates to a judge's perspective right now? Fundamentals. Yeah. Tell us more. <laughs> I know that's like open-ended, but I mean, just my experience, especially this past year, because I got to see a lot of groups, high school band-wise, and I've been doing some stuff in the summer too, and that applies there as well uh, with some of the drum corps, but the the disparity between the groups that are really successful and the groups that are not it's it's not money and it's not staff it's fundamental training as it relates to what you're asking your kids to do so you may see a drum corps that does a jazz run for 45 seconds and you think you know what it's my first year at their snow school let's kick this thing off the right way we're going to jazz run for 45 seconds even though your kids can't do it eh. I wouldn't do that. So I, the philosophy we had music wise at Franklin that we also extrapolated out for visual as well is this, and that is this, if it doesn't sound good on the first read through while we're sitting down in the van room, it's too damn hard because you can't expect, uh, you can't expect to strap a, a tuba on a freshman and say, okay, I want you to sound good on these 16th notes running across the field. If they can't play it and it sounds good sitting down, it's too hard, water it down. And I think now when you factor in loss of time with band camp, possibly not happening the way we're used to or whatever, then that matters even more. But you can, and so the point is, this is an advantage for us because that time is better spent on fundamentals, which has payoff longer in, you know, in the long run. So again, it just comes back to fundamentals. That's, I think, the most important thing in this period, but then also just, you know, when things are normal again, don't play music your kids can't play. That's what I would say. Don't have them spin guard work they can't spin. Make it achievable. And then, uh, now I'm just rambling, so I'm sorry. But what we always thought about was that our fundamental training program, we thought this in concert band as well as marching band, that what we did skill builder-wise was about next year. And the music we were playing is based on the skills that our kids have right now. But during that fundamental time, we're building skills for what's going to happen in the future. So we didn't play things that were beyond what the kids' ability were. We didn't have the idea of, well, they'll learn it by the concert or they'll learn it by the last contest. We made it achievable for them so that we could get to the next level of performance, whether it's you know really getting those thirds in tune and really being able to work on that sense of resonance in all registers or that sense of listening that they need to have. So we really made the music easier so that we could focus on the musicianship side of what they were doing. And that would apply on the visual, the visual side as well. Um, so to answer your question. Yeah, and I think that's an else? interesting take that I kind of want to back up on because you know I hear, I hear people talk about putting pieces on, on stands and stretching or, or doing these things, but you're kind of advocating that, hey, let's stretch with the fundamentals and then let's let our pieces and our performances be a reflection of the things that we've already practiced and mastered in the fundamentals. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like we played, we would do something on the spring concert that might be a bit of a stretch, you know, but for – you know, when it came to the, what we did in marching band or, uh, you know, what we were doing for concert or festival and that sort of thing, we were really conservative about what we played. It was within yeah. our kids' skill sets. Yeah, that's a great point. Ollie, how about you, man? What are your thoughts? Uh, I would, I want to amen what he said to the, to the highest. Uh, this was one of the earliest lessons I learned as a director was to play stuff my kids can play, not what, uh, it, it's just that simple. Play stuff that they can play. Uh, pro, it's programming, I think, is is essential, not what you um, want them to play. And I, I, I think me and my assistant director talked about this. It's like, 
you can't assume they're gonna get it. When you have something that you pass out, now I'm not saying first sight read down, it's gonna sound like um, Blue Devils, but you have to know, know it. They're gonna play this by by X time. The other problem is if we, we over-program, um, and this is not just marching band, this is everything, um, 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 concert band especially, uh, if you are spending your time worrying about pressing this down for B flat, as opposed, if you spend, you're not teaching. I don't really call that teaching. You're training. Press this down. Hit this instead of actually teaching. We're talking about the music and making, you know, shaping phrases and and the intonation and uh, those things. If you spend, if you if you spend the majority of your time dealing with those things, I think you'll have a much better result and a much better sounding group. Um, not always successful at it. But that's what I, I look at. And I think even as uh, I've, I've made those mistakes in the past, I've, I've written music, arranged music that I think they should be able to play, but they can't. And I think if you just would to just, okay, let's play music that I know they're going to be able to play and be successful and not spending time training and more time teaching. And I'm, I know I'm rambling, so let me stop. No, you're, you're great, man. I, and I love that because I want to back that up, training versus teaching. And we just talked a few minutes ago about the role of student leaders. I mean, what, what better analogy and mentality to approach to say, I'm going to teach and I'm going to let my student leaders train. And I think that's a great way that you can approach that to say, man, what are some of these activities that I can offload to my student leaders, the training sub component, so I can do what only I can do, which is teach. And so I think there, there's a lot of things tying in here. So I really think you hit, the, hit it on the head there, Ali. Hey, Nick, I want to say something. Just yeah. Throwing out to those West Tennessee folks, uh, I learned that from Pete Evans. Did that you? was Pete. That was Pete Evans. Yes, he said that to me on a number of occasions. And so, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Evans, and it's a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah, yeah. So great points. Thanks, Ali. So um, we've got about ten minutes, and and David, I want to pick on you again because before we got started, you talked about this unique position that marching band is in right now compared to so many activities. Do you mind kind of sharing your thoughts on that and how we can be prepared to articulate that into the community? Are you talking about with social distancing and that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah, so I was on a, a call this morning with uh, folks in our central office kind of planning what our summers might look like. And uh, a lot of things jumped out to me as advantages for us. And one of those is, you know, if you've got, if you've got a, if you're, if you're coaching your football team, and you've got the kids divided up into like JV and, you know, and varsity. And then maybe the next week your practice is going to be like all the linebackers in both, or you're going to have these mixed up kind of things. The point that was made was, is if one of those kids tests positive for COVID, then you have to shut down everybody for two weeks. And so for us, it's an advantage because you could have flute sectional today or woodwind sectional or however it is. And then because we have more consistent unchanging groups then that allows us to continue on even if a kid gets sick yeah you may lose your clarinets for two weeks or whatever but you can keep everybody else going as opposed to all the mixed up stuff that happens and then obviously you know uh you know we're going to do a lot of our stuff outside that's going to be our plan is to do social distancing and have sectional rehearsals outside well you know we're going to have to be separated anyway because you know we're going to have flutes over here and clarinets over there or whatever it is and so I think, you know, when you're talking to your principals, I would, a lot of the things that we take for granted as our normal way of doing things are maybe not what happens on the athletic side. And so you being able to articulate that as directors to your principals, then that gives you some credibility, especially if you're a young band director or if you've got a young principal that you're dealing with that's maybe a little bit nervous, then you've got an ability to articulate sort of the band way of doing things that will naturally fold into the the specifications that are going to come down from the CDC. Yeah, and that's such a good point, David, because uh, we would hate to see somebody, uh, you know, paint with a broad brush or throw the baby out with the bathwater and that they come out and they say, no activities, we can't do it, social distancing. And you're thinking, hey, man, marching band has been waiting for this moment for a long time. We've been practicing social distancing to get it as perfect as we can. And so you're right, we probably should not take for granted that administrators are aware of what we do or how our practices and rehearsals are run and all of those things, um, because there, there is some truth in that. So we've got about five more minutes. So what I want to do is just ask everybody if you have any closing thoughts or advice that you want to share with all of our participants. So Richie, we'll kick off with you, man. 
looking ahead, what advice do you have for everybody on this? Well, first of all, uh, student safety, uh, it, it needs to be the key. Uh, but be about your students. Uh, do not get complacent. Do not get where you're just like, oh, I just can't, you know, I can't, there's nothing we do. It's not going to be normal. I mean, yeah, okay. Well, you know, find solutions, find ways for, for this to work. Get it, get everyone, every one of your kids can have a free account on smart music right now. Figure out ways to get, you know, to do, to do something with that. Just, just, just be positive, but just like you've heard from the panel, have plan A, have plan B, even though I'm, even though I'm like, you know, full bore ahead, uh, we, we're still thinking, okay, what's, what, what's the alternative going to look like? So just, you know, have, have, have a plan. Yeah, that's great. Kim, how about for you? Any closing thoughts or advice? Um, yeah, before I do that, I wanted to touch base on the leadership thing really quickly. It's just a huge resource for people. Scott Lang has put together um, phenomenal resources for leadership. In fact, we were made by our administration to um, assign the most minimal of minimal work that we could possibly assign. And um, back to Richie's comment of what do we deem important, um, one of the assignments that I had my kids do was this leadership curriculum that Scott Lang is, send, is sending out as long as you go to his website and be a part of the music. Um, there's just so many really great resources there. And unfortunately, we won't be able to finish all of that curriculum. Um, but it's, I think it's just, to me, it was really important to set that grounding for our program, especially moving forward with all this. Um, and just in some closing remarks, I just think communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, your people need to know what you know in order to be comfortable. Um, we get all up in arms all the time about, you know, I don't know this, I don't know what's going on. Um, but that trickles all the way down to a kid whose world is upside down right now. And if we can give them a concrete of, hey, I'm being transparent. I don't know about this, this, and this, but I do know about this. Um, so I just think giving those people an understanding that we are there for them, that we do have information for them, um, and that we are planned out, just like David said earlier, we just have to have that stuff. So I just think communicate, 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 and be transparent and know, like Richie said, that it's the kid that's the top priority, regardless of whatever situation we're in. Yeah. Yeah, great thoughts, Kim. And for those that might be interested, uh, Scott Lang's curriculum is running through his leadership website. So it's joinsll.com, joinscottlangleadership.com for those that might be interested. And we had Scott on on the recruiting uh, webinar a couple of weeks ago, and he shared, and I think he's got like 600,000 students participating in this. So this is certainly a curriculum that a lot of people uh, are referring to. So that's great insight. Thanks, Kim. Uh, Ali, how about for you, man? Any closing thoughts or advice that you want to share with the group before we wrap up? I want to amen what Richie and Kim and David uh, were talking about. Just, just especially Richie was talking about just don't get complacent. Stay on top of, of everything. I also want to consider things that maybe we have not talked about. What if we do start back school and then we have starts and stops and starts and stops? Um, one thing, one mantra I have, I teach every class like it's the very last class before performance. I teach every class, that I did, so I teach with, on fire. And I think we have to, we have to, if we do get back to school, uh, we have to teach like we're crazy. We have to teach as hard as possible and go hard from bell to bell because we don't know, we may have some starts and then we may stop again. So that's some things to consider. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you to Emro and for you guys have done a phenomenal job with this and, um, and, and everything. You know, I love you guys. But <laughs> thanks, right. Alan. I have to admit, I'm learning a lot getting to hang out with guys like you every week. I'm learning a ton hosting these. So, David, what about you, man? Closing thoughts, final suggestions. I want to thank Emro first. I mean, uh, Tommy Arendale saved my life probably a thousand times when I started teaching. Uh, he was my best teacher for about four years. And I will always appreciate AMRO for that. And, uh, and thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, I love talking about what we're doing with BAM. What I would say to everybody, and I, I say this to my directors too, is that focus on what's important. Keep your focus on the important. There are so many distractions now. Uh, it's easy to get sort of like when we're stressed, it's easy to get hung up in those distractions and start focusing on stuff that frankly doesn't matter. You know, and I think it's Winston Churchill that said, uh, if you stop and throw rocks at every dog that barks, you'll never make it where you're going. And so in this time, know what's important for you and your program. 
programs that are in, in you know, Ollie's program is going to look way different than somebody that's out in rural West Tennessee. The, the situations are different. And so know what's absolutely most important for you and stick to your guns on that. Yeah, that's such great advice, David. And always good to talk about Tommy. We certainly miss him on a regular basis. So, uh, well, so for all of our panelists, bravo. Thank you. Y'all have been wonderful tonight. And I really appreciate y'all just coming on and just speaking out loud, thinking through all of this. So, Again, what's going to happen with After Hours? We're going to take just a little break for a few weeks because I think there's going to be a lot of resources that are getting ready to come out from NAM, from NAPR, from NAFME, from a lot of fine arts coordinators and supervisors across states. So what we want to do is to have these get released and then we want to all get back together and talk about creating a solutions focused action plan for your program so that you can go to your administrator and say, here's what I plan to do as it relates to A, B, C, and D, and I can't wait to teach kids music this fall. That's going to be the plan. So we're going to give it a couple of weeks. We're going to get these resources, and then we're going to reconvene back together. So from all of us here at AMRO Music, thank you for being a part of After Hours. Thank you for our wonderful panelists. We'll send out a recording. We'll send out professional development letters. Everyone have a wonderful night, and please be safe. Bye, everyone. Okay, uh, got about half of them off there. Wonderful. Hey, hey, everyone, y'all were awesome. Um, Great you. job, everybody. I thank really so enjoyed much. it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I always enjoy Man, I learned so much doing these every week. I'm, I'm going to miss them the couple of weeks we're going to take off here. So we're going to.